Everybody, welcome. Well, we made it to uh, the end of the week, or the beginning, you know, depending on how well you look at it. And it is Sunday, so welcome to Sunday's live stream. And we usually do on a Sunday is we, uh, there's not a lot of news going on because not really things are actually happening besides a little bit of price action. So what we try to do is just take a look at how the portfolio is done, and then to take a look at what's going to come up in the upcoming week. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So now, if you've been following for a while, uh, we actually started this, uh, there's a DCA simulation. This is on Ben's website in the Cryptoverse. And uh, this part right here for to check for DCA or dollar cost averaging and take a look at a portfolio and how it actually uh, corresponds or increases or decreases over time is 100% free. So you can sign up for that. But if you want to go for more stuff, there's a, a link in the description where you can get 10% off the first month. But the thing was, is that we did this and we've talked about this many a times is that we, we started this out in September. And the reason why I started September is because it was supposed to be rectember. It was supposed to be a pretty junky month and things were supposed to go down, which is what I was hoping for, but unfortunately it didn't work out like that because it just kind of uh, was, instead of rectember, it was uptember. And everything was looking pretty good. So I just showed everybody how things would look like with uh, the different uh, assets that I had at the time. And we took a look at, uh, it was Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, Dogecoin, Link, uh, Matic, what else do we have? Adam or Cosmos, Near, Arbitrum, and Algorand. Now, I have a lot of other cryptos that are out there that uh, I've had in my portfolio for quite some time that I just never got rid of or never sold in the 2021 hype. Just been holding on to them. And that's a lot of stuff. <laughs> I've got a lot of bags out there that, because uh, I sold 80%, sometimes, eh, sometimes 50%. I didn't really do a good job. I should have sold more, but I've got a lot of different things. That would be like the XRPs and the Avalanche of the Worlds and the V-Chains and EOS and stuff like that. But this is what I we stuck with in the beginning just to show you how it would work out as far as dollar cost averaging over time. And the thing that I want everybody to remember is that, yeah, we're doing great right now. I mean, we're up. Fantastic. You know, and I'm happy. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I mean, I'm not like a uh, uh, extreme bear all the time. I'm uh, usually a pretty happy guy. And, uh, you know, Seoul is the the big winner so far. Solana's up 156%. Uh, Chainlink is up almost 100% near. I mean, you can look at it. I don't need to tell you what it is. But just remember this. Even if something happens, I'm not saying it's going to, but even as we, like, progress into the uh, later part of Q4 and into Q1, even if things starts to go down, it's not a big deal because over time, usually that's where people are winners. Now, not all these things are going to go to the moon. Some will just start sucking. Some won't really work out for me, and that's okay. I just need a, a couple of them to do pretty well, and I'll be just fine. But you can see that over time, uh, starting back in September, that there was a lot of points where, just look at this red. All I want you to focus on is the red as I, as I move this slider across. There's a lot of times when I'm underwater, you know, 3%, 10%, 20%, something like that. And then over time, like, you know, you get a little bit of green. But then look at this. And October 14th, I was mostly in the red. And it's the same thing that's going to repeat again and again and again as time goes on. So I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just telling you what I've done. And this has uh, worked out uh, pretty well, I mean, so far. I mean, as far as dollar cost averaging, uh, Bitcoin and alts. But again, not like everything's going to pop off. So that's just the basics, the basics. Now let's take a look at some of the things that I've been delving into that I really didn't I don't really like telling people everything I do. I mean, on this channel, I'm pretty open, but uh, I'm kind of sometimes just tired of people who can't take responsibility for their actions. And I just say, I'll just show them this and that's it. But so on this channel, we like to get people on here who are smarter than me, which I must tell you is not hard. <laughs> but uh, I've had some pretty great guests. And uh, one of those would be uh, Yatsu from Animoca Brands and he talked about uh, Web3 and really broke it down quite simply. This is on my website, Dan Teaches Crypto. It's 100% free. It'll always be free. And uh, I've had on Johnny Hustle from Banter, and I've had Stash and Kagi and uh, some the Avagachi team, and I've had Classy or Jesus on from, from Classy Games. And what you'll notice in here is that there's, you know, there's, I, I put some dates on here so people could recognize like when these actually happen. Because as time moves on, people are like, when did you talk about that? And it was right here. So like, yeah, it talks about this in July 24th. And then here's Johnny. He talks, he started talking about this and he came on in September 21st and his top plays were Vulcan Forge, Mutable X, Dubs, Echelon Prime, Gala. 
And that was him. Stash had pretty much said, he said, just stick to layer ones because I don't want to get into it because he's kind of like me. Kagi gave us uh, Ronin, Alluvium, Immutable X, Game Swift, Avogachi again. And here's Avogachi. And then uh, uh, Jesus gave us Gala, Ronin, Immutable X, Alluvium, Avalanche, Polygon, and uh, Myriad. So during that time, and again, this is on September 1st. So this is around the time when I first started uh, this, as I started to, you know, put this out there. But I had been dabbling in these things. And I got to tell you, like, even though, like, I mean, you can see Solana's up pretty good, 148%. But then the next nearest one is 90% for Link. And then Nier is only 62. Eight is 50%. Matic is 37. But if we take a look at other things, like, look at Ronin. Again, you were down here in October, 40 cents. It's already, it's already doubled. Alluvium is one of the other, other ones, uh, $39, and it's all the way up to 114 bucks a pop. And then, of course, I mean, with Alluvium, I've had both of the co-founders. I had Kieran and I had Grant. And the reason why I had these people on is because I wanted to inform people about not just like just the basics of it, but, you know, why they did it, the passion that they have and what they want to do with it moving forward. And then, of course, on top of that, you know, I said, hey, things are doing pretty well. And I wanted to give a thanks to, to Stash and Kagi and Jesus and, and Johnny and those other things. But, you know, things are doing pretty well in the uh, in the space. And these are the things that I've been actually slowly accumulating in the background. But I don't buy these every day. I don't. But uh, it's worked out pretty well so far. The narrative for me is I always thought AI and gaming would lead the next bull run. Maybe now Dex will be the same thing. And you got Immutable X going from 40 below 50 cents to a buck 50 no well, buck 37 now not too bad gala games i know it's jesus's big thing but going from a penny to two pennies or two and a half pennies eh, that's that still is 150 and then avalanche the things that i've been holding on to for quite some time 922 but this is only th over three months if you take a look at here i still got stuff like over here so don't think like i'm some kind of genius and things like that and then also i've uh, bought some pythe I don't care how you say it. I'm just going to call it Pyth. And, uh, and I bought somewhere over here. And it's actually flat, as much as people talk about it. And then also uh, this one called Bonk. Why Bonk? Because I felt like, well, if you're going to gamble, you might as well gamble on some meme coins. And it's done pretty well. Over 30 days, it's up 545%. Regardless, all these things I'm talking about, it's not to like to say, oh, these are the greatest things of all time. We're gambling. We're all gambling. And I want that to get to everybody's head because just because you think like, oh, the fundamentals of that, it's going to be great. You're, we're all just gambling out here. And don't think just because something has like, you know, I mean, it's great when you have, you can take a look at the fundamentals and things are going well, but just remember, just remember that your market that you're into. And to, to bring this home, I want to show you this chart. This in uh, the last 24 hours is up 140%. So all the stuff that we've been doing and talking about for the last three, four months, you know, here on the channel, with which the other guys have been doing for, for, for way more time. Uh, this particular crypto outdid them all. You know what this one is? I, kinda, I showed it to you already, but it's Terra Classic. <laughs> it's Terra Classic for Pete's sakes. Terra, Luna. The one that collapsed because deep pegging of everything and people think it's going to come back. And this is the one on top of this, the FTT token uh, pumped over 100% because Gary Gensler came out and said, you know, I think we could actually open this back up. And there's a host of other ones that, that pump. So as we look at these things, don't think to yourself like, <laughs> I'm a genius. I know everything. I'm telling you right now, you're going to get ahead of yourself, especially as we go into the bull market. And you're thinking to yourself, yep, I nailed it. But I'm going to tell you right now, the last bull market in 2021, 2017, you could have shut your eyes and thrown a dart and you would have made money. So I know everybody, congratulations, it's a great day. But just have a little humility and say, hey, you know what? This is a crazy market. That's what it is. So take profits along the way. And uh, on top of that, before we get into a little Q&A, go a little quicker today, is that here's our risk summary. Again, this is at the Cryptoverse. And uh, we still have a long ways to go. So even though like it's been a pretty good month, two months, three months, like at some point, I think we'll have a pullback. That's how it always works out. But uh, as far as like summaries and, and metrics go, we're still doing pretty good. I mean, as far as uh, 
as far as um, uh, the risk metrics go. But again, there's always something around the way. And yesterday we talked about Jim Cramer and how he came out and said that, uh, you know, you got to start buying. He's like, if you want to buy Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin. And I was a little bit premature and so on and so forth. And everybody's like, that's great. But remember, there's a reason why it's called inverse Cramer. Because every time Cramer says something, it does the exact opposite. So this, I was perusing on the, the, the YouTubes and I found this. This is a video from Fun on the Ride Crypto. And he pretty much just says, because Cramer said to buy Bitcoin, you should probably sell it. And, he's, and it's a pretty compelling case. I'll link that video in the description, which looks pretty good. So just remember, like, uh, you know, we, we get when there's more bullish news, we become more bullish. When there's more bearish news, people become more bearish. But it doesn't really matter if you dollar cost average, just kind of wait for time because things will work out usually in the end. Not for every single one, but it looks out pretty good. And then to fi finish this off, there was some uh, like I'm always feeling like, OK, what's. What's the other shoe to drop? What's really going to happen? And I'm always thinking to myself, is there going to be a recession? Because I thought for sure we'd have one in like Q4 of this year, maybe Q1 of next year, even though, yes, we're in a presidential election and we'll go through a recession. But as we talked about before in the 80s, I mean, uh, when Carter was running against Reagan, there was a recession as well. Maybe they let that cat out of the bag because maybe they didn't want Jimmy Carter in there. And uh, they want to. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What I'm trying to get to is this. I guess that is some of the different metrics that are out there look pretty positive. And uh, there was, this is the all in podcast. Here's uh, Shamath Alibataya. And he laid out, and it's like a four minute video. And I linked in the description so you could check it out. Or if you can't find it, it's, it's in Google as well. And he laid out uh, one of the five different charts, which he thinks are pretty bullish moving into the next quarter and in 2024. And he says, hey, I think there's, there could be actually a signs for a soft landing. The first thing he talked about was he goes, look, the M2 money supply is decreasing. And yes, it's gone up, you know, massively, all the money supply. But he says, as, as a reminder, we have gone down. We have peaked up a little bit, but it's come down. That's quantitative, you know, instead of the quantitative easing, now we've got uh, retraction of the money supply. And actually, the Fed are actually doing a good job of quantitative tightening and taking the uh, uh, different liabilities off their balance sheets. There's one. On the next one, of course, he talks about the, the CPI or the interest rate has actually done pretty well from a high of almost 9% down to 3.2%. And then he lays out this one, which I've, I've never seen before. That was interesting. Called the Sticky Price Consumer Price Index, Less Food and Energy. And it was because what it is, the Sticky Price Consumer Index is calculated from a subset of goods and services included in the CPI that has changed price relatively infrequently, which of course would make a lot of sense because if it's, if it's changed frequently, you can see it actually dropping. That's actually a good sign. Because these goods and services change price infrequently, they're thought to incorporate expectations about future inflation to a greater degree than prices that change on a more frequent basis. And then we're going to see over here that of course it topped out as, as well in December, 2022, and it's actually gone down pretty well. So there's that part, looks pretty good. Also the 10 year break even inflation rate. And one of his comments was, he said, yeah, he goes, once things started to jump up or almost three, three percent, we should have actually uh, offloaded. And this is what this is, is it's a, the latest value implies what market participants expect inflation to be in the next 10 years. And we can see over here, people are thinking, man, it's gonna be 3% forever. This is April, 2022. And now we're all the way over here. And it's looking like people say, yeah, maybe 2.2, what the Fed's fund rate is actually going to be. That's one good, one more. And then lastly, and this I think was the most compelling, money market funds, total financial assets level. And he laid it out. He's like, look, there's like almost $6 trillion just waiting on the sidelines. And he said, all these different money managers and, and, and hedge funds and fund managers, uh, if you're putting into uh, money market funds, that's great, but you have to deploy this cash at some point. And those people that are doing these things, they don't get paid just to have money just sit around. They get paid to actually make people make more money and more money. If you got six trillion, just this is the highest it's ever been. And of course, it's above this. Then uh, this could put us into a pretty good position moving into the next year. And that is the bullish case against my bearish case for a recession and a hard landing. So that's it for today. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section. And uh, that's all. So look, if uh, you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. I've been talking about it's time sensitive now.